Hi everyone, welcome to the 751 podcast. Haven't uh, haven't done a podcast in a while, and last night I was at the dinner table with my family, and I received a message on on Signal, a text message from a friend of mine who went to listen to someone speak at Berkeley. And she went with her husband, and she texted me saying she had been attacked and she needed to be picked up because she couldn't see. She had been pepper sprayed, and a crowd of roving protesters were targeting her and her husband, and she didn't know where he was. I jumped into the Jeep. I live near Berkeley, and I I drove to pick her up. She couldn't see out of one eye. She had a head injury and probably a concussion. We eventually found her husband, who had more severe head injury and had uh, was bleeding from his, his mouth and had clearly been hit in the face, also his his ankle had been hurt and and we drove them i drove them i drove them home and took care of them for a little bit and it's very depressing because you don't have to agree with with someone but Violence is not a proper response to disagreement. And this is something that the media has overlooked with the left. And it's getting worse. Ever since Trump's election, the people who are holding up love Trump's hate signs, the people who are claiming that Trump is a fascist, the people who are freaking out about Donald Trump, are by and large, as a group, much more violent than Trump supporters. And this group is using violence to get their way. They were able to cancel the event in Berkeley. It was a speech by Milo Yiannopoulos who is a conservative, I don't know if he calls himself alt-right or not, but certainly says some controversial things. Uh, I've heard him say things that I, I disagree with. I've heard him say things I agree with. But that's not the point. The point is that the left no longer lets people speak. Growing up, the left used to be about free speech. I used to be in admiration of liberal principles that that would support the right of even people you disagreed with vehemently to speak. You know, when I was growing up, even you know, people used to use the the example that you know, even even Hitler should be allowed to speak, right? Even even Nazis or horrible people should be allowed to speak. And obviously they should be argued with, and you should point out where they're wrong. But using violence and force and intimidation to shut them down is worse than despicable. It is an abandonment of civilized society. And it's not the right that has abandoned civilization. It's not the right who has gone unhinged and become uncivilized and is threatening the breakdown of civilization. It's the left. You know, and I sympathize with a lot of left, you know, a lot of principles on the left. But it seems that the modern left no longer understands their own principles. uh, And they have no intention of actually sticking to principles. Instead, they simply react emotionally and lash out with 
Molotov cocktails and and sticks and bricks and stones and fists and pepper spray and screams. Screams, obviously, not in the same category. But they're, they act like children. And that's what's become of discourse on campus in America. And that's very dangerous because it signals the end of civilized discourse. And when you can't speak, you resort to violence. So if one side isn't letting you speak, I don't know, what will the right do? If the left continues to insist on violent, violent rioting and shutting down people on the right, I don't know how the right will respond. But in some ways you could see the justification for responding with violence themselves. And these protesters, I use this term loosely, but these protesters claim that they're about free speech while they're shutting down free speech through violence. There's a, a young man who was interviewed on the news last night at Berkeley who said, oh, we would let, we would let Milo Yiannopoulos come and speak and have a reason to debate if that's what he's about, but that's not what he's about. He's about, and then he kind of making money and whatever. I don't. He was not totally coherent about his point after that. But you know, this man said this with a straight face. Or I say what you want about Milo Yiannopoulos or any of the other people on the right. That's exactly what he was about. He was there to speak. He wasn't there to throw rocks and break windows and hurt people. He was there to speak. That's exactly what he was about, at least for that evening. I don't know what he does elsewhere, but that's what he was about. He was there to speak. And these same people saying, well, we would have a reasoned argument, but that's, you know, we'd, we'd be happy to have a debate, but that's not what he's here about. He's here about violence. They're the violent. They've turned definitions upside down, and they've made violent aggressive assault they've they've turned that into we're just protesting and they've turned speech into oh he's that's the violent person the speaker is the violent person this is very obviously backwards to anyone on the sidelines and it's very, very disheartening because if this is the direction that college campuses are going, then this is the direction that society is going over the next decades. And if we can't have civilized discourse because the left can't stand to hear views that they don't like, and they can't stand it so much that they have to pepper spray and hit people and burn things, then we're not in civilization anymore. And what's going to happen is exactly what no one wants. What's going to happen is increased militarization of the police, increased martial law tactics, they're going to create the very government that they claim Trump is creating. Now, one could argue they're responsible for Donald Trump's election, which is a separate episode. But regardless of that, they are responsible for creating a society in which free speech is no longer a value. And that's just depressing. I haven't done many podcasts. I've been busy with my life. 
And now I'm not sure if podcasts are worth doing anyway. You know, Stefan Molyneux came out with a, a short video. I don't know if it was last night or this morning. Also very depressed. Saying that maybe there are no arguments left. Violence is all these people understand. I hope he's wrong. I hope he's wrong. But listen, I know that it's a minority of people out there actually hurting other people, but the people who are silent, the protesters, who were peaceful but silent about that activity, the people who don't speak up and condemn it, the news organizations who don't talk about it, the leaders on the left who don't condemn it publicly, they're responsible for the growth of this violence. And if you're just an average person. If you go to work every day like I do, and you hear people talk about these issues at work, and you hear them repeat the narrative that Trump is violent and Trump supporters are violent and they're the fascists, have some fucking guts. Stand up for Western civilization. Point out when they're wrong. Point out that the people holding up signs against fascism are the violent ones. They're the ones shutting down free speech. They're the ones hurting people. Not the people wearing red hats trying to go listen to a talk. We need to get back to discourse people. We need to get back to a society in which anyone can stand up and say anything without being hurt and physically intimidated or have have stones thrown at them or things broken and burned. We need to let people debate openly to speak their minds even if, and especially if they're wrong. Because if they're wrong, the only way people will actually see that they're wrong is by hearing the arguments and then hearing counter-arguments and exposing bad ideas or good ideas to the light of observation. Otherwise, all people will see is that certain ideas are allowed by the throngs of pepper spray wielding madmen and that other ideas aren't allowed. And that is not a free society. <laughs>